Chapter 13. I haven't seen Kestrel in what, seven years? Queen Scarlet said in a pleasant voice that didn't match the rage in her eyes. What a fun reunion this is going to be. She whipped her tail back and forth behind her. All my least favorite dragons in one place. Clay was the closest dragonette to her. He took a step back toward his friends and spread his wings. She'd have to go through him to get to them. He hoped she couldn't see how his claws were shaking. You followed us here, Tsunami said in a choked voice. Oh, I didn't have to, said the queen. Someone sent up a lovely, helpful smoke signal for me. Let us all right here. What a brilliant idea. My idea, Clay thought, horrified. This is my fault. I brought the sky wings down on us. Who, who are you? Sunny squeaked. Now, really, this is getting insulting, said the queen. You're in my territory. Apparently, you're living under my mountain. Am I the only most important dragon? I am the only the most important dragon for hundreds of miles. How dare you not recognize me? She arched her neck and spread her bejeweled wings. Queen Scarlet of the Sky Wings, Starflight breathed. He crouched low, touching his head to the floor and crossing his front talons together. Now that's more like it, she said, <clears throat> striding into the cave. Three moons, it's gloomy in here. She glanced around, spotted Starflight's sack of scrolls and set it ablaze with one burst of fire. Starflight stared at the burning scrolls frozen in place. Clay edged sideways, trying to shield him and Sunny and Glory all at once. If only he were bigger. My goodness, Queen Scarlet said, squinting. You're a Nightwing? She battled Clay aside as if he were made of leaves and grabbed Starflight's chin. Clay scrambled up again and took a step toward her, but the clanking of armor and grim expressions of the Skywings spilling into the cave made him stop. A Nightwing not yet 10 years old, Queen Scarlet said turning Starflight around and prodding his scales like he was a cow she planned to eat for dinner. How thrilling. They don't normally let their dragonettes out into the world. We might corrupt their superior perfection or something, you know. She breathed smoke into his face and he coughed. I've never had a Nightwing in my arena before. Thrilling, thrilling. Tell me, what am I thinking right now? Starflight's expression was pure terror. Too hard, Queen Scarlet teased. I'll give you a hint. I'm thinking, now why would a Nightwing, a Seawing, and a Mudwing be hiding out under my mountain, along with whatever these, those two are that the Mudwing is cutely trying to protect? She flicked her tail at Glory and Sunny. Clay shivered as the Queen leaned closer to Starflight. This wouldn't have anything to do with a certain prophecy, would it? What is going on out here? Dune grumbled, limping into the cave. He stopped short at the sight of sky wings. His black eyes turned slowly toward the queen and Clay saw fear on his face for the first time ever. Webs, he yelled. And then the maim sand wing hur hurtled across the cave toward the queen. Stop, Sonny shrieked. They'll hurt you. Dune didn't seem to hear her. He seized Queen Scarlet and flung her away from Starflight. Don't touch them, he roared. You'll never get your claws on them. The queen twisted in midair and landed on her feet, facing him, hissing. They're mine now, she snarled. She launched herself at Dune. Webs came pounding into the cave, just as the Skywing soldiers erupted toward their queen. He barely paused before throwing himself in their way. His tail smacked three of them back, and his claws raked the underbelly of another. Clay had never seen him fight before. He hadn't known Webs could be dangerous. Stay back, Clay said to Sunny. And you should hide yourself, he added to Glory. Disappear while you try to die for us again, she said. No, thanks. She pushed past him and went after Tsunami, who was already fighting alongside Webs. Clay shoved Sunny up onto a boulder and ran to join them. Wait, I can help, Sunny called out. Can't I? These dragonets are sacred, Dune shouted as Queen Scarlet smashed him into a stalagmite. She was smaller than him, but deceptively strong, and his old injuries slowed him down. He staggered up, gasping, with his scarred wing trailing crookedly be beside him. They're the dragonets of destiny. You can't have them. But what if it's my destiny to play with them, she said, lashing her claws at his stump. 
He howled and a stream of blood poured from the new wound. Oh, wait, that's right, she said. I don't care about destiny. I don't care about prophecies or any of that night wing silliness. She scored her talons along his wing, ripping open the scars. Besides, they made me awfully mad when they ran away. That happens to me far too often. But you know what? I always find the ones who betray me in the end, even if I have to wait seven years. The queen seized Dune by the neck and pinned him up against the wall. Right, Kestrel? Clay stumbled. The Skywing was fighting, knocked the Skywing he was fighting, knocked him over and tra trapped his tail and wings beneath four massive feet. The battle seemed to freeze for a moment, and from his crushed position, Clay saw Kestrel slide into the cave. Poor, poor Scarlet, she said bitingly. Everyone betrays you. Well, you've got me now. Let these worthless, worthless others go. <clears throat> she didn't even look down at the dragonettes. Clay twisted his head and met Tsunami's eyes. He would never, never have guessed that Kestrel would give herself up to save them. Maybe she really meant it about keeping them alive. Maybe that was the only thing she cared about, no matter how much she hated them. Kestrel, the queen, tisked. That sounded like an order. Have you switched from disobeying orders to giving them now? I won't fight, Kestrel said, her voice cold and hard. I'll come with you. Just leave them. These dragonettes have nothing to do with the Skywings. You will come with me, said Queen Scarlet. Funny that you thought you had a choice about that. We've got a thrilling trial planned, followed by an even more thrilling execution. But as for these little dragons, she swept her tail toward Clay and his friends. You can't really expect me to give up prizes like this. They're no prizes, Kestrel snorted. They're useless, every one of them. Plus, I'm weird looking, Sunny chimed in from the top of her rock. The queen's tongue flicked out of her mouth and more smoke coiled around her horns. Oh, they're just the new blood my arena needs. It would be terribly sad to let them go. I would be too, too devastated. Clay tried to heave the skywing off him, but the soldier who had him pinned was too big. He barely glanced down at Clay's pathetic struggles. This would be a good time to call up that inner monster, Clay thought, but no surge of strength or violence or rage answered him. Take them all, Queen Scarlet announced, except this one, of course. She shook Dune lightly, as if she were shaking the fluff off a dead pigeon. He clawed at her talons, his eyes bulging. I mean, what use is a crippled dragon who can't fly? I'm surprised you haven't killed yourself already, Sandwing, but I can take care of that for you. No, Sunny screamed, leaping at them, but it was too late. With a chilling crack, Queen Scarlet snapped Dune's neck and dropped his body on the stone floor. Dune, Sunny howled. She squirmed past Scarlet and crouched beside him, shaking him with her front talons. Her mangled wing flopped and his, his mangled wing flopped and his scales scraped against the rocks. His black eyes were empty. Dune, wake up. Clay was too terrified to move, even if he could have escaped the Skywing soldier. Dune is dead and it's all my fault. I came up with the smoke signal plan. I brought the Skywings here to kill him. Who else is going to die because of me? Kestrel suddenly lunged at the Skywing soldiers. She grabbed the one who was clutching webs and ripped him free. Tell the Talons, she snarled, shoving webs toward the river. Before anyone could stop him, webs pelted down the slope and dove into the water. A huge wave doused the rocks and splashed all the dragons. He vanished below the surface while Clay was still blinking. Clay remembered the tight gap in the long tunnel he'd swum through. Would webs fit? Would, it make, would he make it outside? Ooh, Queen Scarlet said, wiping her crest dry with one claw. The talons of peace. I hope they try storming my sky palace to save you. That would be thrilling fun, especially the part where we slaughter them all. The Skywing soldiers brought chains forward and started wrapping each of the dragonettes in heavy iron. Clay caught Golori's eye. Hide, he mouthed. She shook her head. No way, I'm going with you, she whispered. The weight of the chains made Clay's wings and head droop as they were all marched through the tunnel and out into the dawn. The sun was slithering up the sky, casting golden light across the mountains. Clay glanced up and thought he saw a dark figure circle overhead, spot them, and fly away. He guessed it might be Marosir, but he wasn't surprised that the Nightwing made no effort to rescue them. Nightwings never got their claws dirty. They delivered prophecies 
and told other dragons what to do, but they stayed out of the war and avoided fighting. Clay's heart ached. They'd come, to they'd come so close to freedom, but now they were far worse off than before. Life under the mountain had felt like prison, but he knew it was nothing compared to being trapped in the claws of the Skywing Queen. <laughs>